all day. Money, power, respect. Three the hard way. Ooh. What up, world? Welcome back to the Three the Hard Way TV. Y'all go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, hit that notification button. New videos are on the way. Uh, we back, we back in action. Um, on today's show, we got the beautiful, the beautiful Miss Harris. That's eating. Uh, we got the beautiful, <laughs> the the beautiful. They, they know you already, Bri. She, 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 she acting a little stank. She got her head done. Um, My head been done. <laughs> We got my OG, the triple OG, my uncle, Dick. Uh, we you got my him? boy, my boy Real coming in from the West Coast. Milo coming in, checking in from the West Coast. Yo, what it do? We got my boy Jeff down there. Jeff, what up, bro? What up? You good? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. On, on, on today's show, um, the topic we're going to be discussing this evening is, in your opinion, who would you say is to fault, blame, <laughs> or the main contributor <laughs> for so many single black mothers? Bree, go ahead. <laughs> I feel like you antagonizing me right now. No. Uh, see, I don't want to say blame because I, I don't like I the say, word blame. I said fault, blame, or, or exactly. contributor. Look, okay. What's the cause? I'm no, What's the cause then? I'm no judge and jury. I don't have a hell or heaven to put you in, so I don't want to say blame. Because everything to me is about accountability. So, what I would say are some factors when it comes to um, single parents, um, you know, raising children. Um, I believe that a lot of things, um, one thing comes from just temporary uh, emotions can uh, birth permanent decisions. Um, I think there's a lot of different tactics. I think that two adults sometimes are not on the same page. I believe some people do things out of spite for their own personal gain or what they think they're going to gain. Um, why they're single in the homes. I mean, I can take this all the way back to the government because at one point I remember um, living with my, my stepmom and my, of course my dad was there but she was under section 8 and they do inspections so when it came time for an inspection it was you gotta hide anything that looked like a man because if not then you may be subject to you lose your house and things of that nature so um I think even that is a, a key a factor where there's why there's single homes. Um, some may just mimic what they've seen. Shit, I came from a single parent household, and I either gonna change the way that I'm gonna do when it comes to my children, or I'm gonna be the same way. So I think it's a it's a lot of factors as to why there are so many. Um, I think adults just need to be accountable on both ends and okay. there's no accountability. So I'll okay. say that. I wanted to get the women out of the way first. Ms. Harris, your thoughts. Um, I definitely feel like half is systematic and the other half is a lack of experience. Um, I think we're in a system that doesn't allow for black families to um, stay together. You know, they kind of figure out ways to separate the two the, the parents. Besides, um, I think Bree said 
Section 8 food stamps, you know, things of that nature. They kind of like try to like push you off to be that independent woman so that you won't have to need a man in the household. And not only that, sometimes we just, our egos get in the way. We don't know how to communicate with each other. We don't know how to look at things from different perspectives. We have a lack of experience in the relationship area um, and as, as well as what we've seen growing up. But um, I think it's half and half. It's systematic and it's like your, your own self, your own ego, your own lack of communication or lack of understanding too. Milo, my brother. Yeah, so I feel that it is a system that was put into place. I know Derek might touch on it. He's like hitting us with the history facts. But uh, I really think that was uh, a system that was put in place by white America once they started the whole divide and conquer thing. Breaking a family structure up, specifically the black family structure up, was like very detrimental for us as a whole. Once you remove the black man from the house, that's when they started the mass incarcerations. You know, you implement the drugs in the black community. Once the, the structure is gone, you, you have nothing to build on, you know. And uh, that once once that's out of the way, it was just opening the door for a lot of things to happen. It was them. inevitable, huh? Yeah, they, they had the system in play for a while. And once they executed it, that, that was it. So it's not... I don't want to say it's someone's at fault for it, but but yeah, like like Bree was saying with the whole Section Eight issue, they know to keep the black man out of that household. If you see what I'm saying, once he comes back into play and they start building up that structure again, they're just putting more fear in their hearts. And the same thing, like Shar said, with um, the inexperience. That comes into play as well, but it's not as big of a deal because those type of things you can work and better, you know, that isn't necessarily the, the reason why. So I, I really just feel that it was a system and they executed it. Somebody else say something. Not only that, but it's, it's a lot of households with two parents. It's not yeah, it is. every black family. Well, of course, they only going to paint the negative. That's, that's how they want us to be portrayed. So you know, what about those households with two families, with two parents who didn't make it? It had nothing to do with the system. It's a lack of communication and understanding. Yeah, it, it happens. Right, because I'm just because it's one thing. Go ahead. And, and just because it's two parents in the household doesn't mean that they're both parenting or that they're active. I, I know somebody, you know, who's come from a two-parent household and the father was just there as a physical being. He didn't implement anything or he was only there as a body. He wasn't there to actually grow and teach and groom and things of that nature to show model like things. Right, but that's his coming. That's his the, character the woman coming into play. Huh? That's his character at that point coming into play. Right. So, right. When I was just piggybacking off of, you know, because it is some that, because I believe personally, God gives us two parents for a reason. Um, I don't feel like everything should be one-sided. However, if there is an absentee for, you know, unforeseen reasons, unfortunately, it does kind of doubles the load. It really does, whether it's communication. And not all the times it is communication. I mean, what are, what are we saying to those that parents are slain or parents that died? So it's, it, at that point, it's, it's no longer a system because someone passed away due to health reasons. But that's true. So the now I, I got to raise those four. Right. Right. That's, we, we that's, that's true. That's true and far between. That's, that's no, not, that's, that's more and more that's, every that's, day. That's, that's, that's more not, and that's, more every day. That's not the norm. In 2020, yes, it is. Okay, but the, more more so y'all know what the question is, though, like the single black mother. So we know it could be exceptions to this and some fathers in there, but right, what's so creating I'm it? On it as, a, as a whole. Okay. It's a lot of things crazy. Right. That's, I'm just saying point. it's just more than one fact. That's, that's go, go, go ahead, uh, Dan. I, 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 I know I see Dan, Dan ready. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, we know that there's a lot of, you know, like I said, I don't like having two, three conversations at once. Right. But we know that there's a lot of different causal factors. But if we look at these from historic, historical context, we know that early in the 60s with the, with the enactment of the women's movement, the feminist movement with the liberation of white women, what they did was they sold black women to join them because they want to receive equal pay like equal white men. But see, black men, we have always treated our women as equal, all the way from back to, to the motherland. So we never care ourselves higher than our woman. So the man can't rise no higher than his woman, you know, so that's what it means, right? So we always believe in family. So when you had the feminist movement uh, enacted in the 60s, then they wanted to have equal pay for equal work. So then they began to, uh, they began to recruit a lot of black women to believe in the ideology that they don't need a man. So, and I'm, you know, and not to offend anyone's sexuality or anything like that, we know most of the women who were a part of the feminist movement, they were lesbian. So they didn't want a man, right? So when you fast forward to uh, the late 60s, what ended up happening when we had the uh, last migration from the South, when people began to migrate, to the north to get a better opportunity than you had the family structure. My, my father and mother came up from Mississippi in 66, right? So um, the family unit was intact. So it wasn't until that um, after the, the, the Vietnam War, when a lot of those individuals started going to war, getting killed, and then now um, the, the white women would take them on the job that the white man had. So they said, okay, well, we don't need a man. So a lot of uh, black men, we were disenfranchised. We wasn't allowed to go to war. So we weren't allowed to even fight for America. So once they began to enact public housing, so they started public housing in the early 70s because you had the great migration. So many black people was coming. And when they came into certain communities, like from North London, that was traditionally a Jewish and German community. And they moved out and they was allowed to simulate into mainstream society. Then they had red lines. So we was follow into a community, then now in order to appease the white women, they gave them social worker jobs. So the white women come to the house and say, okay, well, I can give you welfare if you are a single parent. So once they began that, then the economic paradigm began to shift. So that black men, we couldn't get jobs. So once the paradigm began to shift, some of, some of fathers actually abandoned the home to allow their families to prosper but then as we fast forward to generation to generation, we had a shift in thinking, whereas now from an economic standpoint, you know, and this may offend some, but then we had black women start believing, okay, well, I don't need no man. I can do this. I can get any bikes to take on this responsibility. Now, I'm not making a blanket, blanket indictment saying that all black women took on this particular ideology or mentality, but you know, they say the, the, they say the fruit don't fall that far from the tree. So then what we end up having when we had our women going into like the projects, then you had a generation of women getting projects, a generation of women getting, getting, uh, uh, becoming single. Then when you had the, uh, uh, the war on drugs, when they began to lock all the black fathers up and taking them out the house, then they, they got criminal records. So they can't, um, get employed then a lot of women began to get public housing and the welfare then they start putting getting a lot of women um uh, uh, what do you call that child support so okay well you know if you want the link card and so on you get child support so now that began to deteriorate the family structure even further and and i think the young lady she said as best sometimes it's temporary emotions that we have have these different emotions but we have long-term ramifications. So I think a lot of times we tend to, you know, we want to content, condemn people for life. Uh, you know, I cheated on you, you cheated on me, but it all starts with physical attraction. So we, when we're young, we, we physically attracted to a person with no attention on really marrying them. Then we have uh, kids with multiple women and multiple women, uh, men, and it comes down to it's just an ideology and we need just a change of thought. But it all started with the feminist movement of women, white women, saying that we want to be just like white men. We want to hold the same job, the whole same pay, 
then they had some a group of intellectual black women to join their movement and they began to sell those sisters who were so-called uneducated in the idea as you don't need a man to support you or if you want support from the government then now you can't have a man in the house so it was systematically done over over right now we're talking about two, one generation or going into two generations now so once again once we began to look at all of those casual factors and understand that you know it's all a trap so the stage was already set to destroy the black family right so that's why we have a lot of single families in the home today and that's why we have a lot of young men a lot of young brothers out there who's prone to violence because they don't have a father figure and we have a lot of young sisters out there they have a kid at a young age because they don't have a father to begin to model as to what should a man be and who you should give yourself to so i mean uh once we begin to look at things from a holistic standpoint and i think as individuals we have to begin to learn how to take our emotional out of the equation you know i'm not in a relationship with my son mother but i do the best i can to have a a uh, good relationship with her. Now, I have done some things that I regret, and I don't know if she regrets the things she, she may have done, but I think that um, had we began to uh, think about it when we first got together about what's going to be our legacy for our family history, then we'd probably still be together and we would have been on one accord. But sometimes we get in a relationship and we never on one accord. Just because if someone look good to you, or well, feel good to you, it doesn't mean that's the best person for you to be in a relationship. Okay. Hey, that, uh, uh, brilliantly spoken, my man. Brilliantly spoken. Um, real. I got to regather my thoughts because he must have been looking at my notes over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I see, see you do that, man. See, see, the problem is we came from Londale, but you must be in my little brain over here, man. <laughs> I started to go before him. I started to go before him. So go to jail. Let me let me recalculate and come at a different angle. Go with Jeff. I'm still learning, man. I'm, I'm trying to figure out the topic. Okay. All right. So I got I got so my angle will be a little different. So Derek, since you you got the historical and you older than us on here, what year? I know it was after uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated. What? Was it around the 70s when they took carpentry out of high school and stuff like that, where a black man could go get a good job right out of high school? What year was that? You remember? Uh, I want to say around 82. So the 82. last, um, I can recall, uh, I believe it was Washington Trade School that was in the close proximity to Blacks, which was on like, I, I want to say 31st and Kizzy. So I think they closed that down back in like 82, 83, when you can go on to become an apprentice. Yeah, so I think, and that was doing like uh, the Reagan Bush administration. Around that time, mm -hmm. we began to see a lot of those programs, uh, carpentries and a lot of the industrial arts and automotive class, even in the high schools, they began to disappear around that time. Right, so I agree. So, because I was going to come with all the facts you have, but you beat me to it. There goes my brother. But I feel like that played a big part, too, because think coming out of high school, those people was able to go get a job, carpentry, all that stuff to take care of their families right away. Mm -hmm. That was making good was good, making good money to be able to support their family. Fast forward to today. No one income could take care of family like 40,000, 50,000, two kids and a wife. You cannot do it. No. Back then, you know, right out of high school, people was making, you know, they was going into careers where they could make money and stuff. And then you insert the uh, the drugs in the 80s, you know, and then most black men in the hood, we struggling in our neighborhoods and we dabbled in that. And then like Derek say, fast forward to the war on drugs. Now you take those guys away. So it's been a systematic approach way before we was even born, you know, way back then. They already have uh, planted the seeds for the future, for stuff that's already be in effect for us. And then just me being from my generation and stuff, like I said uh, in the previous one, that we, you said something, Derek? No, go ahead. Oh, like I was saying in the previous talk we had was that uh, we jump in these relationships, like y'all said, with no emotions, but we never become friends with the, the woman or the man that we with 
and we jump into a relationship with them, our kids with them, and we really don't know that person. So then we leave that person and we still can't even co-parent because there's no friendship. Like I technically don't know you. I know you sexually and you used to look good to me, but we all know that phase away. So then I go about my business, you go about your business, we can barely co-parent. And then insert child support, like you said. Child support, most men on child support, is, they just feel like it's a detriment to their success. So they take it out on a woman or the kid, or the and chief, they just yeah. end up, be, and it's just being like a disaster. You know, so it, it's, it's a lot of factors to it. But like Derek said, I believe it started way back when, before we even thought about it. So us being born, we was already born into the system that was already in place. And 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 um, you know, to 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 piggyback on the piggyback on the piggyback, you know, they also created uh, laws as well to to keep the black man down. Uh, the RICO, um, um, what's the one that Biden um, wrote in ninety? Right. The, the, the crime bill. Yep. The mass that started the mass incarceration, and you know, it was it was different yeah, that, things like that that, that, that added on to it. Uh, Yeah, that was actually uh, President Clinton in 1995. And what that mean was that uh, the he gave the federal government the right to build as many prisons as, as possible. And that's when the first prisons became, began to be uh, privatized. So people, you know, was on in right. private prison. And then the, 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 the government would fund those prisons. And uh, so even if you, if you look at, I believe in the state of Arizona, I'm not sure it was the state of, uh, maybe Georgia, where you even had a prison, sue the state for not filling the prison with men. Yep. They said, you know, you're going to fill so, the prison with so many population because they were, they were paying the individuals who ran the prison. So uh, I think we have to begin to look at those type of things. And now, you know, when you have the, 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 the uh, information, we have the information laid now with the Instagram, with the Facebook, with the uh, only fans, you know, we have people believing that, okay, well, I don't need anybody, so I don't need you. I just get 100 likes on Facebook. So what I need a man for when I've got this man over here liking me or this woman over here liking me looking at my picture. And then, you know, then we began to uh, uh, promote sexuality more today than we promoting promoting any family unit. So it's all about, you know, look at my titties, look at my butt, you know, Look at my tattoos, you know, look at my muscle, opposed to, you know, we, we celebrating those men and women who was actually out there on the front line and uh, supporting their families. So we shine them. And then, you know, we want the motherfuckers who look like they're on the verge of killing their mother. You know, or, so if somebody look like they on the verge of a very sexually promiscuous or some guy look like he on the verge of being a mass murder, those are the ones who we attracted to today. Then we start having these kids with them. Then the kids grow up dysfunctional. So it becomes a cycle. And, 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 and usually it takes about 40 years to get over that because a generation is considered as 40 years. So if you look at things from a biblical standpoint, not saying that I believe this, but that's why... You know, when Moses wasn't allowed to see the promised land and the Israelites never saw the promised land, they was they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. So right now, if you look back 40 years, we're still in the wilderness trying to come up out of that. So on a metaphorical level, uh, 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 from a metaphorical standpoint, we have to begin to understand that we're in the wilderness now. And it's probably going to take a generation of us to die out. You know, for us to correct that behavior. I mean, it's unfortunate, but that's reality. Okay, la 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 ladies, you know, I want y'all, you know, y'all heard everything that us men had to say, and I want to um, know with all of that uh, knowledge and wisdom and our uh, personal feelings, do you ladies di agree or disagree? <laughs> there was a lot of that. Um, I agree. It's, I I don't think everything is a hundred percent. So, like I say, I think it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Um, it's definitely stemmed from the history of systematic, um, you know, of the system, and also in modern day, just making bad decisions. 
um, not getting to know a person. We're going to go to another. We did the history. So now it's like you have to get to know people. You don't know a person. You jump in the bed with them. Don't know their family history. Um, and, you know, we just make those poor decisions. And and I feel like there needs to be order. That, that the Bible kind of, I'm not no Bible thumper, so I'm just going off of what I can remember, you know, marriage, sex. Uh, marriage before sex and having kids. I feel like that's why that is so important, you know, to get to know somebody because you have one man with five families of kids and five different women and the kid misses out and those four other women become single mothers instead of this person getting to know the mate and going about it that way. So that's just one aspect of it as well as the system and plenty more. You know, aspect. So, I, mean, I, I just want to chime in one quick more time. So, we know when we're looking at our society that on, on a mass scale, we have more women out here in society than men, right? So, right. That's, that's going to create an opportunity for, for, for men to exploit women. So, that's no doubt. But, however, you have the same woman out here, they chasing the same man. So, right. you know, when we're talking about accountability, so when you look at a black man, a black man is always going to get uh, criticism for having uh, uh, kids with multiple women or but why do we give a black woman a pass when she got three, four baby daddies? So we're going to, if, you understand what I'm saying? So we're going to look at things from a, from a, a, a standpoint, then we have to create an egalitarianism when it comes to accountability. So we can't hold this person accountable because he got kid with four or five women, but then we give the woman a pass when she got kid with four or five guys. So it can't be both ways. So we'll never get anywhere if we, you know, gonna hold this person foot to the fire, but give this person a pass. No, we ain't giving out no passes. Everybody is held accountable for their own actions, period. Women too. And like I say, it's a lack of experience and it's a lack of understanding. You know, everybody make mistakes. We didn't, we don't follow the, the path or we don't follow the the principle or the law, how it should be. I mean, like, not moral law is what I'm, what I'm thinking of, you know, of getting to know a person and trying that person out before you lay down with them and seeing if you like them or not type thing. But women too. It's not just a, I'm definitely all for a different perspective and duality. The woman makes mistakes and the man does too. So when I speak of the man, it's not just shooting him down because we do make mistakes. There are women out there with multiple baby daddies, period. Go ahead, Bree. Well, that's why I only let a nigga trick me once. So uh, I ain't got to... <laughs> you can only trick me once. I ain't went that hard since I was eighteen. Ah, I'm good. But um, I mean, again, I, it, it's all it's all about a fifty fifty, and especially I, I I get it as far as generational things, systematic things. But it's like, okay, at what point, while wondering and these woke individuals, while we're in the wilderness where the cycle is going to change, because now it seems as though, and this is just my perspective, um, there are um, a lot of women, I mean, me included. Um, I don't say that I need a man. May act like that, but I don't want it to be that that wasn't only the thing that I was here to put here to do. Like I know I was sent to reproduce and things of that nature, but some people feel as though, especially us as women, when you get to a certain point in your life, if you don't have a man or you're just holding on to a piece of man, then it comes all the self worth as well. But you holding on to a piece of man just to say that you have something, and it's just like. I do, at that point, rather be alone. I do. I understand that I've never been a man, so I do struggle with raising my son because I've never been a man. I can only tell my daughter that I don't have what I went through growing up as a young woman. However, um, when it comes to screaming to the mountaintop that I don't need a man. I think it's just also was just, again, forced up on. 
because it's like, okay, I can get out here and I got to make things happen because at the end of the day, kids going to holler, mama, 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 mama. That, that's what they going to holler because that's, that's who they see. That's who they see making things happen. And I don't, I don't think that men get a pass because the same way I look at a man, I don't care if you got 18 kids and that's men or women. If you taking care of them, that, that's okay with me. I got a problem when you out here study making kids and you not taking care of them. And my thing is, is that everybody don't have to be into it. You should come to a point where, because y'all was nice enough to fuck. I mean, y'all won, y'all won sex and angrily. I mean, maybe a couple of times because that's been the drunk. shit that made it excite y'all. But that wasn't the initial thing. Like, you, you what's up, Miss Lady? Nigga, fuck you. Like, that, oh, we fucking tonight. That's, that wasn't the move. That didn't how it go. So if everybody can just get back to that place, and again, if, if things that comes with it, you know, again, two adults, again, not being on the same page, we don't know how to communicate. And that's just point blank and period. So, so we didn't know I, how to, we, we knew how to, we talk with our genitals. That's how we talk. We don't talk with our mouth and really get inside an intellectual because half of the time, half of these men that get these dizzy daughters pregnant, if you would have just listened to the, what the host said, you wouldn't have a baby with her. And you wouldn't I'm have definitely baby. that woman that is not saying I don't need a man. God put a man on this earth for a reason. Um, I'm definitely, you know, an advocate for you need a man. Not you need it because he's going to make you feel aware about yourself, period. It's just that's how I better have, period. That's your... Right. That's and and you, you should want that. I don't think that that is a necessary... That is a... That's a necessity. It's definitely it a necessity. Is. That you need one. It's a necessity. I think so. God ain't just put us here... Respect. I mean, man. I think that we, we just got to keep in mind, so, so relationships supposed to be based off you complement each other. So that's what we mean by compatibility. Right? Exactly. And a man who finds it, the wife finds it a good thing. So until that moment comes, I personally feel like that I don't have to spring that I don't need no man. But if if the if like you said, if if it, if the relationship is not complementing each other, if we are not complementing each other, what are we really doing? Right. So but when you when we're looking at the, the male female dynamics in today's society, we're looking at the power structure. So a lot of our women in our community have been raised above the black man through even things like the criminal justice system. So black men are criminalized just by being black. So when a lot of these brothers they can't afford to take care of women, they like fuck, I go get somebody else. If he, if you ain't gonna do this, uh, Billy Bob will do it. So now they chasing the ballers and they and they chasing the other guy. Now I know we got a lot of guys who are out here grimy as fuck. So so don't get me to that point. But I'm talking about on a mass scale, a woman will take her, her, her a woman would take her kid's father and put him out the house and put another man in there who ain't take care of all motherfucking kids. So you know we just got to we just keep, got to keep it real. And you right, know the, same take care of the, the same way with the man. The same way with the man. They leave their three so, kids and go play house. So remember, we're talking about, so when we're talking about things from a power structure, you know what I'm saying, because I heard you mention, Bree, that, hey, I got to get out and get it. So, man, you go out on a job interview, you know, you probably going to get it. The job before I do, you know what I'm saying, based on your sexuality or your sexual orientation. So my point is, when we're looking at things from a structural standpoint and a psychological standpoint, people begin to raise themselves above the other sex then they say well fuck it i go fuck with this guy he got a little more than you or i fuck with this woman she a little more sexual attracted than you but if we looking at things from an economic and power standpoint especially in the city of chicago we know that then about 65 70 percent of the the, the the households are headed by women but we know women got motherfucking men in them Right. Hold on. Let's let Milo get in there. Let's let Milo get in there. I'm uh, I'm gonna have to backpedal a little bit and just say um I think it was Charlie was saying it last. Uh, we definitely do need each other, man and woman. We was created together. It's no one person can do it by themselves, you know. Um opposites we come together and we balance that out it's, it's not just about 
one gender being able to take care of everything. You know, we both play key roles in, you know, our children's lives and society and everything so forth. It's, it's not just about one one side of things. So what Jeff got? I'm still trying to get up. You still what? I'm still trying to learn from it, man. I don't want to say nothing that, that, that it go with you, what y'all talking about. What? Oh, okay. Just like that, huh? Y'all. Yeah. So, oh. Brother Dion? Um. <laughs> Hey, we all, every, everybody uh, here today on this panel made some very valid points, and and there's some things for me to uh, that I, I'm taking in and I'm learning from because it was a lot of stuff that I didn't know, and I'm I'm me personally, I'm just going as a black man, I'm gonna try to be the best father that I could be, even though I got you know uh, single uh, uh children's mother i'm i'm still i'm gonna do my best to make sure that uh my child my children are okay to try to help ease that burden even though i'm not in that household <laughs> that's a great point that's all you can do that's it yeah well currently since i'm out of the dating game because i'm married but I do live, I believe you single people in 2020 should live by the slogan that women wear makeup because men lie and men lie because women fall in love with potential. And that's why we get in these situations because you believe a fantasy that's not even there. Now, just kind of back to what Derek was saying earlier is that some people really don't believe that stuff could be already set up before you happen. Like right now, if you think of your life, Everybody on this panel is maybe under 30, except Derek, right? <laughs> <laughs> Derek might be 35. He's been looking right. like this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now, you fast forward right now and look at your life at 65. What do that 65-year-olds think of you? Is that 65-year-old out there still working and slaving because of what you didn't do today? Now, and that's the same thing. Somebody else created something that we was born into, and you could believe it didn't affect you, but it all it already affected you. That's why we're having this conversation, because everybody on here, with the exception of Milo, I know he don't got kids, but everybody else on here probably have kids outside of the person they with now. So you've been affected by it without you even knowing. No matter what you thought you done or did, and you could have saved this, it was already pre-written because of obstacles that's against us like a black man we go through different obstacles than a black woman and that's part of sometimes why we can't understand and we see things through different lenses because you know some people only see what they're going through and what's affecting them and they don't really know the burdens like we talk about all the time about uh you know in the hood like where me and Dion come from like we we should be suffering from ptsd like some stuff we've seen and of course, you're not going to put that burden on your woman, but in your mind, that mental stress is there. And it's not cool for us to go to therapists and psychologists and stuff like that. So you bring all that into relationships and you've been excuse, beat down. By, excuse, excuse me, sir. I, I went to see you secretly, somebody. You secretly went. I, I let it be known. I have, I, you know I'm, I'm not ashamed hey, of it. Hey, there, he be calling my other phone. I have to give him therapy. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I think we all be using this therapy. <laughs> exactly. So... <laughs> Okay. So it, it, it's no right or wrong to anything, but it's a lot of factors that play into every decision that you make. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't just make those, don't think you're just making those decisions because you live in everyday life. It's already pre written and, and stuff in your way to make you choose this decision. Uh, you know, this was, this, hey, this was a good, this was a good discussion, man. I'm, I'm proud of y'all, man. I'm, I'm really proud of this, this intelligence here this evening, except for, uh, my man that got disconnected. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and uh wrap this video up because I felt like I feel like we uh touched on everything we need to touch on. Everybody that watched this video, y'all leave y'all comments below. It may be some things we didn't touch on, it may be some things you don't agree on. You may don't like one of us at the point of the end of this video, but we really don't give a fuck. 
Um, <laughs> y'all go ahead, hit that subscribe button, keep watching. Thank y'all for watching. Good night, everybody. I'm going to bed. <laughs> Bye. All day, money, power, respect, three the hard way.